Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach as a place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411 which is basically where we do a deep dive on a certain subject. So sometimes it's a different storyline or an event. Like we did the nurse's ball. We talked about the history of the nurse's ball, did a little recap of that or how the characters celebrate different holidays. We've been able to interview a couple of the cast members. And today we are going to be giving a little bit of a background, not even a little bit. We're doing a background on a character who has been talked about a lot recently, but was actually only around for three months. I don't think I realized. I knew it was just a blip, but I didn't realize it was only three months. I she know. caused a lot of trouble in the short amount of time that she was there. She had a major ripple effect, too, yes. because it's we still see it. Mm-hmm. We still have what she caused. And I don't want to say it like that because she did something really good, but we still have the extra the aftermath yes. from her presence. And we don't do spoilers, so you don't have to worry about that. If you're someone who likes to avoid spoilers, we are not going to do them. And I was actually wondering about that because we are guessing yes, that this person might be coming back. But she's also been mentioned a lot lately, and people are probably like, who the heck is that? Right. We're not the only ones wondering if she's coming back or not. Right. So it's good to know who she is in case she does show up. And if not, I feel like they're still going to talk about her. So you need to know but exactly. what they're talking about. And especially where she was only on for three months. So many people probably yeah, just have no clue. So we are talking about Corbett. Yes. And we used YouTube, General of Hospital, Fandom.com, ABC Soaps and Depths.com and soapcentral.com for all of our research. And Amanda's going to get us started with a little bit more of Claudette's background. Okay. On February 26th through the 29th, 2016, while on pain meds after being shot, Maxie Jones tells Nathan that she loves him, and he replies by saying, I love you too, Claudette. When Mm. Maxie... Don't don't ever say the wrong woman's (laughs) name. Especially to Maxie. But he was on pain meds. I mean, if there's ever a time to excuse it, I feel like... Whatever. It was his cover-up that was bad. When Maxie asks about Claudette, Nathan lied and told her that it was his French poodle and then his ex-girlfriend. Why? (sighs) Why would you start with a dog? No. Childhood French poodle or something? Yeah. Anything other than... A dog. You know she's going to bring my that babysitter, up later. my babysitter, my nanny, right. my favorite teacher. She tutored me and I thought she was hot. Anything. Anyway, but we'll go with the French poodle. There you go. And then ex girlfriend. And then ex girlfriend. <laughs> On March 14th, 2016, Nathan revealed to Dante that Claudette was his wife. On April 4th, he told Maxie that she was his ex wife. It was a marriage of convenience and that they had it annulled. Claudette and Nathan met at a bar while he was in uniform in New York, and Nathan describes the French-Canadian Claudette as different from other girls. They went out, and it went well, so they kept going out, and he proposed to her after the second date. That's not I, they kept going out. Right. Two dates is not continuing to date. It's just started getting dating, like in your dating adventure. But it's crazy because you see all of those we got married on our first date, and they're married 45 years later and Very perfectly true. happy. It's not common at all. No, no. You know, but it's it's just enough for these crazy kids to think they can have a shot. But the thing is, their second date, Claudette suggests that they do a bunch of New York stuff that people don't normally do. They hit the Bronx Zoo. Is that not something that people... I think that it's one of those things, like, if you live in Pittsburgh, you haven't necessarily been to a Steeler game or True. a Pirate game okay. or whatever. Since you're there, you don't do all the touristy stuff. So I bet that most New Yorkers have not done all the touristy stuff. Okay. I can see that. He, they rode the cyclone and took the ferry to Governor's Island. Nathan then realized that Claudette was just checking boxes off because she wasn't going to be a New Yorker anymore as her visa had expired. So Nathan decided to marry her as she was single and wasn't doing any, as he was single and wasn't doing anything. (laughs) Because why not? I don't have any plans tonight. You want to get married? Sure. (laughs) It was a marriage of convenience at first as Nathan fell in love, but Claudette didn't and was cheating on him the whole time they were married. 
After he found out, he couldn't forgive her, so they got an annulment. Nathan assumes that she is back in Canada. She is formerly of Hell's Kitchen in New York City. So that's a little bit of her background, and that's before we even meet the woman. Right. So we actually meet her in July 2016, and she showed up at the Metro Court for an interview with Maxi to be a graphic designer at Crimson under the name C.J. Boland. After the short interview, Maxie is so impressed that she, Claudette, gets the job. Later on, Claudette surprises Nathan in a hotel room at the Metro Court. The two of them argue as they rehash the past, and she tells him about getting a job at Crimson with Maxie. Afterwards, she then apologizes to him, but he tells her that she can't work with Maxie and that she needs to leave Port Charles immediately, to which she agrees. Nathan leaves her to check out of the hotel, but when he comes back, he finds Maxie with her. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. This was the time that Maxie was portrayed. In that <gasps> I know. I was going to mention was... that. And when I first started looking up clips, uh-huh. I was like, wait, is that, who is that? And then someone finally wrote Claudette with Big, Big Maxie. And I was like, yep. oh, that's why I remember, but I don't remember. Because was that not arguing with Maxie? My original GH fan page yes. on YouTube? Yes. So did you watch that clip? I did. Okay. He has some funny... If you need a YouTube channel to follow, so he obviously is using his phone to record the show as he's watching it, but his comments yes. are, if you get offended by cursing, you may not. He's not over he's the top. like vulgar. He just, I, I think he dropped the S word once or twice. He doesn't say anything not said in the show. Right. He uses the B word a lot, but he doesn't say anything that you don't hear on daytime TV. But exactly. I was, I was amused by him, especially when he got the phone call. Yes. And he apologized for it. I was just like, okay, dude, you just go ahead. All right. So please so continue. Funny. I'm glad that yes. you brought that up. No, I'm just, I was glad that he clarified. <laughs> Maxie. I was like, thanks for that guy. Um, back to the storyline on September 21st, 2016, Claudette revealed to Nathan that she had given birth to a daughter whom she named Charlotte soon after the relationship ended. Claudette believed that Nathan was Charlotte's father, but knew there was a small chance that her former lover Griffin Monroe could be the father, which at that time he didn't know that the former lover was Griffin. He just thought it was some guy or whatever. They didn't know Nathan knew that it was Griffin. Not when they first saw him on the week, I didn't think. Yeah. Oh, they had already revealed it was Griffin Uh at that point? Oh, okay. But Maxie didn't know. But then Maxie had been confiding in Griffin and she's like, why did you let me tell you all this stuff about me? Because so when Nathan said to Maxie, told Maxie that he had a daughter, but then basically that's when Maxie also found out that Claudette, Maxie and Nathan walked in on Claudette and Griffin making out. Oh, okay. And she was like, what the heck is going on here? (laughs) And that's when Nathan is like, yeah, he's the one who, Uh, yeah. Okay. So you remember when Griffin finding out the same time that Maxie did? No. Like around the same timeline. Because he had shot him. Yes. But he didn't know who he had shot. He did. He didn't originally. Yeah, he did. He knew that he shot Griffin Monroe. No, because he didn't. There's a clip of him at the Metro Court with Claudette saying, I just need to know that he's okay. Who is he? Can you just help me find him so I know he didn't suffer any damage from it? I did not see that clip. Yeah. So okay. originally he did not know. And then when Claudette, which I'm sure all of okay. this is going to be in here, but Claudette hurt her knee and had to be yes. at the hospital. That was whenever Griffin walked in and it was like, oh, Griffin's here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. I didn't see those clips. Oh, well, see? We could have done this all off of YouTube. We really could have. That was <laughs> difficult to find. It was. To find the whole sequence because you couldn't watch just three months in a row. No. But um, Maxie has learned a few things because immediately after getting this news, Nathan tells fiance Maxie Jones, who encourages him to get a paternity test done. Claudette had a lock of Charlotte's hair and a necklace, and they used that to conduct the DNA test. Nathan sent the samples to a private lab, so he knew not to take it to Brad, send it to a private Did lab. Did we have Brad yet? And see if we can get some right results. I don't know if we had Brad If we yet. didn't have Brad, we had some other tech that could have easily been bought off. Absolutely. So they were trying to go about it the right way, demand a DNA test, and use an independent lab. So I did watch the clip where she... Got the lock of hair and everything. Okay, and I didn't watch that one. Maxie was like, but it's brown. How do I know you didn't just take, and this is fake Maxie. How do I know you just didn't take it off of um, Nathan? And so it'll come back as a match. She goes, because that would be Griffin's, or that would be Nathan's clone. 
All right, so Maxie was a little smart because she demanded the DNA test. She doesn't know, have to know how DNA tests work. But what Claudette said was that Charlotte is a natural brunette. Claudette said that Charlotte is a natural brunette whose hair lightens in the sun. I'm a brunette, and my hair does get lighter, lighter in not the sun, the color but not to where you would think I was a blonde. Right. And was that ever addressed again? I don't think that it was. I don't think it was either. I don't think it was. Which is weird, because they did a really good job casting Charlotte. Charlotte yes. and Claudette look amazingly alike. But then she also does look like Lulu and Valentine. Yes. So it's... They did a really good job. They did do a good job. Go back and watch those YouTube clips, though, of when Charlotte first came on. Oh, she was so quiet and, and shy. Little. She's so little. Don't you hate when you're listening to a great podcast and suddenly you're interrupted by an ad? I know. Thank goodness Stitcher lets us listen to our favorite podcasts like Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, and many more ad-free for only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year. Go to Stitcher.com slash premium to sign up today. Use promo code PEER54 for one month free on us. Do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor is such an easy way to record and edit a podcast, and you can do it from either your phone or computer. Best part is you don't have to worry about getting it out there. Anchor distributes to many platforms, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. You can start making money right away without having a minimum number of listeners, too. Anchor really is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So back to the DNA, DNA test. On September 29th, the DNA test confirmed that Nathan was Charlotte's father. Nathan wanted to see his daughter as soon as possible, but Claudette was afraid to reveal their daughter's whereabouts. When pushed, Claudette tells Nathan that she is trying to protect her daughter and herself from Valentine Cassidyne, with whom she had a prior romantic entanglement. After things went south between Claudette and Valentine, he began threatening her and Charlotte. We've all now known, like, looking back. Right, there's no way he was threatening Charlotte. Charlotte. So they went into hiding. It was later revealed that Griffin is actually Charlotte's father. And all I had to say about that was she tried to trick a doctor and a detective (laughs) on paternity. Yeah. Both men have real access to very sophisticated technology to get the truth. And... So the girl that was assumed to be Nathan's daughter winds up becoming his sister's stepdaughter. Oh, I had not thought of all that. Neither had I until, yeah. Well, good job. Yep. (laughs) I'm telling you, we're going to do this map one day. So then after Claudette fled the country, it was revealed that Valentine is actually Charlotte's father. Claudette is last seen on a plane heading to Canada when Valentine appears and takes the seat next to her, stating that she took something to belong to him. It's most likely that Valentine had killed Claudette killed. On December 8th, 2016, it was revealed that Claudette has no biological claim to Charlotte as she was just a surrogate. Dun, dun, dun. On December 29th, it was revealed that Claudette never signed or had the divorce papers filed. Therefore, she and Nathan were still married. <gasps> Weren't you shocked by that? No one was shocked by that. <laughs> um, Nathan believed that she wanted to use their marriage. But after 20 days... It would be automatically divorce, as we just learned with Dante and Lulu. I think that she never took the papers to the courthouse. Oh, okay. Okay. Not that she didn't sign her name to them. That's what I'm assuming. You'd think as a detective, he would make sure that that was taken care of. Yeah, it says never never signed or had the divorce papers filed. (sighs) Okay. See, I heard signed. Sorry. Yeah, but my active listening skills are down right now. (laughs) When you file divorce papers, whether you're the person that filed them or you're the person they were filed on, you get a piece of paper in the mail that says, yeah, hey, this was filed. Yep. So you never thought to question why I didn't get that piece of paper? Hmm. And you're a detective. I'm questioning your skills there. Mm -hmm. Nathan believed that she wanted to use their marriage to protect Charlotte, but Maxie believed otherwise and reminds him that Claudette is a pathological liar. On January 4th, 2017, Valentine deleted his contact of Claudette, hinting that he may have taken care of her. 
On January 11th, Valentin secretly had his connections in the Canadian authorities report to Nathan and Maxie, who had come to Canada to find that Claudette, that had come to Canada to find her, that Claudette had committed suicide a month ago, ending the search for her. With her dead, Nathan and Maxie were finally able to get married on January 17th. And then in, and that was 2017. So on October 27th, 2017, Cassandra Pierce, a powerful drug lord who was blackmailing Valentine, revealed a picture of Claudette holding a newspaper with the current date, hinting that Claudette might still be alive. On January 10th, 2018, after Valentine covered for Nina, after she unintentionally overdosed Cassandra and sent her into a coma, Valentine got the photo of Claudette from Cassandra's henchman, Eric, and deleted it. And then on September 19th, 2019, Cassandra revealed to Valentine that they both knew Claudette was indeed alive, and she said that she has her. It was also revealed that Claudette had fallen into a coma. I wonder if she was the test for whatever she did to Sasha. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Huh? Hmm. Cassandra attempted to blackmail Valentine into working with her, but that plan failed. And as we know, she went boom. <laughs> That plan failed because she went boom. You can add your own sentence to that. That's what we said when she died. I remember. It was Cassandra went because boom. that was a good explosion. Yes. Crimes committed. Fraud married Nathan West to keep from being deported. Adultery had an affair with Griffin Monroe while married to Nathan. Is that a crime? I mean, I know they say that's a crime, and most people don't actually consider that a crime. I guess they are here, which is all that matters. Kidnapped Charlotte from her father, Valentine. Put Charlotte in two secluded and hidden locations to keep her hidden from her father. Cookie is really upset she, about these she, crimes she, that she, she committed. She is. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cookie. Claimed to be Charlotte's mother when she was not and hit Griffin over the head with a vase and rendered him temporarily unconscious. That's not really a crime either. Uh, no, nope. he pressed charges. But those were bad things. Bad Claudette. Health and vitals. Hunted by Valentine. I Adelaide. love that line. <laughs> Presumed dead after being captured by Valentine. Held captive by Cassandra Pierce, which is assumed to be from January 11, 2017 to present. And currently in a coma, which was revealed to us September 19th, 2019. And assuming that she still is in a coma. Yep. So, yeah. So, I mean, we just wanted to give a little backstory because here's the deal. Claudette is who brought Charlotte. Exactly. Into our lives. However... This poor girl comes to Port Charles, is told, and she told she her, did tell Charlotte. this is your daddy. Yep. This is Nathan. He's your daddy. And Charlotte got close to him. And then she was like, oops, sorry, no. And she introduced her to Griffin at Maxie and Nathan's apartment. Uh-huh. And so she was like, go say hi to your daddy. Exactly the same thing that she told her with Nathan. Right. And she turns around and goes over to Nathan and is like, hi, daddy. And it was, like, so heartbreaking. And now we see her as my petite from Valentine. So, yeah. What is happening? And is she going to come back? Did I, she live with Valentine before, though, as something else? Because Charlotte and Valentine have a relationship that they feels like it bond. didn't just start a couple years ago. Yeah. I honestly forget. And I stayed on right. track with okay. Claudette just, because I think that we could do a total background on Charlotte now. Yes. Yeah, we definitely to answer should. those questions. And I'm sure someone is probably going to comment on one of our social media and remind us, which would be awesome. So thank you, because sometimes research doesn't show it all and we could go down a rabbit hole. We get lost a lot. <laughs> <I do. laughs> YouTube is dangerous. It is. But there was an interesting article that I think it was on Soap Central that said she was only supposed to be on for a couple weeks. And then the... The producers asked, can you be on for a couple months? Oh, okay. So she was really supposed to be just in and out because she played Jessica Buchanan, Buchanan on One Life to Live. Yep. Okay. So she, was, she wasn't she was another character that came over from that show, but she left, came to GH for a blip, and then was gone. Right. Again. And did you know that she is best friends with Kimberly McCullough? No. I talked in this one article, and it said, she was so excited when she got the call, and she called Kimberly, and she's like, that's awesome. Take it. Oh, so that's so cute. I thought that was really cool that she's Aww. BFF with Robin. That's awesome. So, yeah. I mean, this is a super short 411, which is good, but it's, I think it was Yeah, we covered it. If you have time, definitely check out YouTube, because seeing her interact, especially with fake Maxie, yep. 
she's a very good actress. She portrayed, like, you hated her instantly, just like you were supposed to. Oh, yeah. There was no sympathy. She was just an awful person. Well, and then even with Nina, too. Yes. Because, you know, Nina was in her coma (laughs) while Claudette was married to her brother. Right. And so she had no idea. And now she's being introduced to this woman who tricked, I don't want to say tricked him into marrying her, but persuaded her into marrying him for the green card. Right. To then cheat on him. Mm -hmm. To then say that he has a daughter. To then say, no, you don't. Right. A daughter that she knew couldn't be anyone else's since she was a surrogate. Right. So, and then she lied when she got the job too, because she started with, she's CJ, I can't remember what her last name was. Boland. Thank you. CJ Boland. And I only know that because I read that. (laughs) CJ Boland. And then they were like, no, wait, you're Claudette. Right. So she said something about she didn't want to have an unfair advantage, but she made it sound like they would hire her because of her relationship with Nathan, where in actuality, but they it's not like not her name was Claudette her. West. True. Exactly. You know, right. You could have said Claudette anything and that wouldn't, there's Nathan a wasn't on the hiring Claudette committee in the world. Right. And it's not, I guess she was assuming that maybe Maxine knew about her. Maybe. But still, yeah. I don't know. I can't wait. If they do bring her back, I can't wait to see what she does. Bye. And if they don't bring her back, just the drama that it's still going to cause, because they mention her enough now, yeah. even though she's not there, she's a part of it. But here's the thing. If she comes back, and so we know she's alive, but now she's in a coma. Right. That means that Maxie and Nathan's marriage is nulled. I know. I thought of that. I'm sorry. And that, don't apologize to me. I had the same <laughs> thought. I'm sorry that that's going to make you sad. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm apologizing for. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's going to be hard to watch. I don't think it really matters. Do you think point. that like the courts will be like, you know what? We're going to go ahead and give you an annulment on the Claudette, Nathan, and we're going to make sure that yours was valid. Unless she's trying to go after Nathan's money. I don't think it's going to matter. But would it affect Maxie's money? Because I would right, imagine that I... Maxie is getting some kind of a pension. Right. That's what I mean. If she's going to go after Nathan's money, then if Claudette's going to go if after Claudette okay. goes after Nathan's money, then Maxie's going to have to show the court that she's the rightful wife. But I don't know that Claudette, I mean, she is evil and nasty, but she seems to have plenty of money. So yeah. why would she go after that? It's not even Maxie's money at this point. It's James's. You're really going to take it from right. Nathan's baby. Come on. I don't know. I mean, we saw what she did with Charlotte. It depends on how desperate she is, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But I just hope that they don't go down that rabbit hole, that it's, if it's addressed, it's quick. Yeah. Here's Alexis is going to swoop in and it's going to be fixed with a couple clerical pieces of paper and they're done. Yeah. Not so too. Yeah. drama and fighting and right. Cause that's just not necessary. She's got enough to deal with when yes. she finds out about Peter. Exactly. We don't need this to, yeah. to find out that the love of her life was never actually her husband. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Poor Maxie. We'll get there when we get there. You're looking ahead. We're projecting. We like to project and I know predict. We do. I know we do. We like to predict. But not the bad stuff. We'll just, it'll all be fine. They'll live happily ever after. Yes. Yes, they will. There you go. And Shannon will be happy. There okay. you go. So that's it for this week's 411. So have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 